Hello there, ladles Hi. and jelly spoons to E Fat Mini Scoop Chat Ketchup. For episode. Wait a minute, do I actually have the number? <gasps> 259, I do. The Chris Stuckman episode. We got Stuckmanized, was the highlight. Um, mm -hmm. Boy, did we. There were a lot cool. of us there to get stuck, Stuckmanized. Mm hmm. It was uh, enlightening. So, we got some messages it's from you folks. It was unlightening. We're going to read them. So, here goes. Uh, do you think Trevor's axiom is real? Trevor's axiom? What's that? I ain't never heard of this. Trevor's yeah, axiom. Well, maybe I can... Are you Googling it? Oh, is it a South Park thing? Or is it a real thing? The theory of virality created by trolls. What? You're going to have to be a bit more specific? I think it's a South Park thing. Because I'm seeing discussions on the fact that if it's discussed enough, it could become a real thing. Uh, I'm not seeing like an expert. Um, I don't know that from South Park. Um, I don't know that. The art of I guess, trolling, I guess. The art of trolling? Like, it's all, that almost sounds like gaslighting people into think something's real, if it isn't. But can you talk about something so much that maybe people start to believe it's true and then act as if it's true, which then makes the thing manifest in some way? Uh, C-A-B. The diagram doesn't help without me really understanding what it's trying to get at. I mean, there's one. probably some truth to the idea that you... Okay, let me take a look at this. One equation Right. One person can create a massive reaction on the internet. Person A trolls person B, but it's not but it's not person B. The troll is trying to push buttons to try and get a reaction from hundreds, eventually creating person C. Person C who's overreacting and self righteousness will elicit a reaction from persons D to F who weren't trolls but can't help rip on person C. The reactions to outraged persons G through N, and if it keeps going, creating a massive explosion, bringing out the worst humanity. Oh, is this just like a fight can get out of control because of uh, the people who are like surrounding the people that it's aimed at? It seems like that's the idea. Because yeah, that's just true. I mean, yeah, that sounds yeah, that sounds true. Yeah, especially with how many, especially with the the internet allowing stuff to get amplified without context. I would even go as far as saying that is something people are aware of in Harvest. They know that it's like, oh, yeah. you want to defeat a side? It's like, well, gun for the people in the side that are the craziest. or give you the most opportunity instead of, you know, the actual main people or whatever. Um, there's a suspicious amount of YouTubers here. Oh, is that right? Mm. Maybe the correct amount. This is, this is someone's just chanting... You. Men's rights, men's rights, we have it worse, we have it worse. Well, I don't know how that came up on the Chris Stuckman episode exactly. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not sure what the through line is there. Hopefully, Chris Stuckman gets to keep his rights, despite yeah. his, um, despite his opinions on films and the, uh... He's got all the right opinions, you know, what do you mean? His opinions, landscape. he doesn't really have... Oh yeah, he has. He doesn't have opinions. He has statements of fact, I guess. But yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Farewell and adieu to you, fair Fleemish massives. Farewell and adieu to you, massives of Fleem. Once again, one of the more common submissions we get these days. I'm not entirely sure what it's referencing. Still, I'll get there one day though. I love the auto accelerate option in MK8. I always use it now. Not only is it more comfortable for my thumb, but it also frees me up for the X button. Um, What's the auto accelerate? What's that? Just makes you go. So you don't have to press the button. Mm -hmm. to go. To go? Like move forward? Yeah, to like yeah. accelerate. It's yeah. Oh, Mario Kart Mario. 8. Mario okay, Kart 8. I, I, Were you thinking it was like Mortal Kombat 8 or something? Yeah, when I, when <laughs> I hear to MK8, accelerate I, <laughs> Mario, Mortal Kombat. The auto accelerate in Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. That's my, uh, that's my incredible confusion and <laughs> desire for <laughs> clarification. It is, but yeah, it makes sense. What what is 
So auto accelerate is like you're always pressing the A button or the yeah, the pretty go. much. It's, it's automatic. There's a couple of things that you can turn on in uh, Mario Kart. 8. That's fair. Like, considering like an auto steering thing as well. Auto steering. Yeah, like it'll it'll automatically steer and and keep that you. Feels like a step too far. Road. Yeah, well, hey, look, all right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about that one, but the auto accelerate sounds reasonable because, like, what ninety eight percent of the time you're holding basically the go forward button, you will be yeah. holding down the A button. There's basically no reason to not hold down the A button. Well, unless you're playing on two hundred CC, then you then you might want might have to slow down for curves and stuff. And oh, you will you will definitely have to slow down because the levels are designed for one hundred and fifty two hundred. 200 just makes the game instantly uh, more challenging because all of the courses Imagine. are designed for 150cc. On 200, you have to break. Like, you can't win if you're not hitting the brakes. Well, all right then. Uh, fair enough. Yep. On, on the 93 Mario movie OST is the track for the ice tunnel scene, quote, Speed of Light. Well, that's the title of it, sorry. By the artist Joe Satriani. That's, that's all it says. Joe Satriani. All right. All right. All right. If that's the ref. If that's a reference to something, I'm afraid it's a bit lost on me. I'm sorry. Kathleen Kennedy gonna get you. She gonna get you. Oh no! 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 Kathleen. Don't even joke about that. No. Not hiding under your bed. That's all. <laughs> it's not funny. Could, could you imagine looking underneath your bed and well, seeing her staring which, at you? Someone said, uh, "What's your favorite South Park episode?" Which is where they make that joke. Uh, uh, Favorite South Park episode? Oh, so many to choose from. Ah, oh, damn. Um, I mean, I know it's a boring choice, but Make Love Not Warcraft is a pretty easy contender for the best That's one. That's a classic. It's one even I've seen. Mm hmm. It is. Scott Tenemon Must Die is another top tier episode. Um, there are a lot of good ones from season eight, like Fun Times with uh with weapons is pretty funny. Um, I love the good time with weapons. Imagination Land and Cartoon Wars episodes. Oh yeah. Uh, also, uh, uh, kind of like a one that I I did really like was. Do you remember the like the Coon trilogy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was that was a pretty entertaining one. The Coon itself, that episode is pretty great. Um, what else would be on there? Castle Bonita. Um, oh yeah, that's like a all time <laughs> great. Like I said, there are a lot of really good ones from like season eight and nine. There's a lot of uh, all time greats in those ones. Yeah. I remember one that I always quite enjoyed was overlogging, the one where uh, the internet goes away. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was a ghost. The, it was ectoplasm. The, it was a spooky ghost! <laughs> it's, it's all flying off of his head. And then, of course, the uh, the losing <laughs> side, the baseball one, um, where uh, all it was for Randy was him fighting other dads at the uh, Little League games. Why you arresting me for what? I'm not allowed to stand up for myself? I thought that's America. Huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought it was America. When uh, <laughs> Obama like, was getting president right, he's like, I thought it would be changed. I thought the, the, the oh, oh, yeah. changed. Well, that, was, uh, that was pretty funny because uh, they had that episode as well where the whole idea was that the 2008 election was a cover for them all to do a big heist uh, and go to yeah. London. <laughs> And then meanwhile, Randy's like, "What well, change? Yeah, change." And then I think it was, uh, I think he's arrested, dad, right? One of the McCain supporters, and they were all like depressed and miserable, and thought that the world was going to end. <laughs> uh, will there be a One Piece arc on EFAP? The anime is worth watching. Probably not. No. Well, for the show, for the anime, dude, that's so long. <laughs> like that's like thirty seasons of television. If there's going to be anime coverage. And it's not going to be One Piece, and then why would it be Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood or something? I I mean, first in line for me would be uh, uh, One Punch Man. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously in the oh, what if what if when you eventually get around to Death Note, is that on the cards? I I can't know for you. I'd have to see it. Mm. But who knows what the future holds. I used to think Umbrella owning Raccoon City... Oh, Umbrella owning Raccoon City was strange, but I guess it's something that's really happening in America. What, of like a city owned by a corporation? Yeah, I mean, that's... I don't find that that much of a stretch, company, especially in... Company towns are, are very much a thing. I guess not company cities, but, but like company towns, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're normally like, uh, like a town is based off of a particular industry, 
Yeah. So everyone is involved in that industry or that industry plays a huge role in that town's success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's like to where if that industry dries up or goes away, the town essentially fades away into nothing. Mm hmm. Uh, I I have Bambi, Lady and the Tramp, and The Secret of Nim on Betamax. Cool. On Betamax, wow. They're collectibles. I suppose they are, yeah. Is, uh, is Betamax short for something? Or is Betamax that just the name was a... Uh, it was, I, I think that was just the name, but it was the, the format. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know if that was like short for... Like CDs, compact disc, and... Well, what does VHS stand for? I'm... What's, oh, I don't actually know. What That's does a good VHS question. stand for? I used to know it. I've forgotten now. VHS. It's not even coming to mind, video, honestly. Video. Hey, ain't that swell? <laughs> Vehicular slaughter. Doesn't really Maybe make it's sense. Just video oh. high school. No, that's VGHS. Oh, video home system. Video, that's it. VG video home system. Did I ever really watch VGHS? I mm, don't oh, the think video game so. high school thing. No. Ah, oh, okay. That was a pretty long rocket jump. Uh, the big elephant in the room is that COVID slowed production and then the strike had slowed it down even more, so there's almost nothing coming out. What? Talking about... Which is strange, because it never felt like nothing was coming no, out. No, there's... That... No, I, in fact, it seemed like there was almost... that Because oh. everything got delayed, there was, uh, like, a... Everything kind of got cramped there for a while. I thought the first proper year we were going to feel the results of that was this year, 2024. Uh, it'll be this year, yeah, because a lot of things that would have been coming out this year have been delayed because of the strike, because usually a lot of this stuff is shot, you know, about a year before it's meant to come out. Yeah. So we're not going to see it probably until... I mean, you can see it with Marvel. They got one movie coming out this year. You know, if you <laughs> discount the Sony ones. Deadpool 3, which, um... Rap filming. Man. Uh, well, yeah, but I mean, damn, like, you really only got six months of post-production? That seems not good Best uh, of luck. at all. Hopefully they focused on just those two in environments that don't require a lot of CG work. Maybe. Yeah, but it's Marvel. I don't know. Well, and it, and it know, is like... Wolverine and Deadpool. They're not characters that just don't do it. They're not like Professor X. No, exactly. And even he would have CG, I... you know? <laughs> Well, it's just Deadpool has CG for, like, expressions. That's, yep. It's not like Wolverine's Ryan Reynolds claws, is... blood. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, what we want to see, so best of luck, Whatever folks. crazy places they go to. We'll be keeping a close eye upon it. He looks like a ragdoll made with intentionally wrong proportions. I think you're talking about Chris. He, <laughs> he does come across as um, awkward, like one of the strings are broken on the puppeteering. Oh. But wait, so there's, they, they do have strings on him then. He's not Pinocchio. No strings and all that. Or Ultron. I guess he isn't. I guess somebody's mm. got strings on him. Who will it be? Oh. Will we find out in episode 1000? Is that going to be the big reveal? I, will there be mm. strings? Will those strings be cut? It's a lot of, a lot of questions. Um, thrashings of goo for everyone. Hmm. Is that what a plurality of goo is called? Yeah, the thrashing, thrashing a uh, well, it's thrashing a unit of measurement. As far as I'm aware, it is because that doesn't sound that unusual. Oh, yeah. a to me, thrashing. thrashing. I was just thinking of somebody saying goo, but they were going to disseminate it by like thrashing about, you know. Maybe it right. is evoking that, but it has something to do with I don't know. I've heard it yeah, used that like... way before, but I've never looked into like the definition. Mm. It's like a like a tossing of rice. Something like that, yeah. A crashing of goo, I see. Uh, but my... goo doesn't... That doesn't really sound like a good way to describe, like, the dispensation of goo. Goo is... it Thrashing sounds, like, kind of rough, but goo is like a... Like a... a well, gooey. And, like, viscous, you know? Like, syrupy. Mm. It would be yeah. like a sloth. Maybe? I was thinking sloshing around. A, was... Yeah, or a sloshing of goo. If it was like light, you know, and it could slosh. Because you can't really you can't really slosh honey around or syrup, you know, it's just too thick. Yeah. It would be I like um I don't know, it'd be like a a a blobbing or a coagulation or something like that. Uh 
what do you guys think about Wings' seatbelt story? I quite like it. I think it. that was... I was... I really like that as well. He said something that made me go, huh. And then Boogie is like, hold on, you think that's a great story? <laughs> Let me come in with my shit. For those who do not yeah. know, on one of the LolCow episodes, LolCow podcast episodes, uh, they were sharing insights and Wings said that he'd put everything in place to essentially kill himself and that uh, he'd got a place picked out, he had the weapon he needed and that he was, he was, he was on the way and uh, he was, I think, getting out of the vehicle, I guess, and, and thinking about doing it and then he thought to himself, why did he, uh, why did he put his seatbelt on? When he was on the way there. And that, that was enough, I guess, for him to think that fundamentally he does not want to, uh, does not want to end. He wants to keep going somewhat. And, and you know what? He explained it way better than I did. And, uh, then, as, as Fringe just mentioned, just like before you can think about that, Boogie just starts talking about himself mm -hmm. for extended periods of time. It's just like, thank you. <laughs> like, That's he likes to do. But it's, um, it's a good little story. Makes you think. It was a really nice story, and I think it actually had some kind of an impact on him, too, which makes it even more meaningful. And then Boogie is just has never said anything that makes me go, hmm? You no. know, he's never said anything think, insightful. I think if he ever did, it would be by accident because I just don't buy it from Probably him, by you know? accident. There's always It'd be like, yeah, monkeys and typewriters, essentially. Do you know that everything means nothing? You know that? Yeah, I wow. learned that for the first time as a fifty-year-old man. Did you ever? Did you ever consider that something so powerful could come from the ground? It's not like fruit it's like, and vegetables. It's barely even from... baseline. Like someone would just any philosopher would just be embarrassed. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. And I'd be like, "How old are you? Are you ten years old? No, I'm I'm fifty. <laughs> oh, wow. And that, that's my Damn. cumulative knowledge. I've come to understand that really nothing yeah. means anything. Really, You're like uh, oh. thanks to my shaman. Uh, Flaming star. Uh, what was it? Flaming star. <laughs> Flaming star. Not a great cool. name. Existence. Cool, yeah. Existence, you know, makes you think. Existence. Is a movie that's finished but not released art? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. There's a lot of uh, many different acts of expression went into making that, even if it hasn't been uh, put together yet. I think this well, is probably the vast costumes and acting in the lines. The vast, uh, vast, vast majority of human-made art has not been seen, rather than seen, right? Well, I mean, there's I a lot of art. Probably that, say so. You know how much? You know how, how much is deleted, thrown away, does. or made without any yeah. concern for someone to yeah. see it? All of every the sketches, poem and doodle you know? and short story, and you know mm -hmm. every draft like of a novel. Oh, you know for a fact there are artists out there who've got like 500 failed quote-unquote drawings that are better than anything <laughs> that you could even conceive oh, well, of. Think, You're uh, like, shit, man. I was thinking Kafka, right? He destroyed like 90% of his work was destroyed. He just got rid of it. The awesome team... I mean, how the... many... Um, like, people like Van Gogh, you know, they didn't really get discovered until after their death, so... Yeah, you wonder how other... many other Van Goghs are out mm. there, or who were out there, but they just, all their stuff is in a trunk somewhere, or every time they finish something, they destroyed it for whatever reason. It's kind of sad to think about. Yeah. So we don't have to. Arguably what One Life is and about, right? Like, without spoiling anything, the, the thrust of the story is brought on by a little, like, folder that he has. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the awesome team behind the OA has made a good vision of Glass Onion in Hulu's Murder at the End of the World. A compare and contrast would be interesting. Murder at the End of the World. Interesting. Hmm. Never Not going to be it. hard to be better than Glass Onion. Even if you're close to Glass Onion, it's going to be easy to be better than it. So, good for them, I suppose. Stuckman was raised a Jehovah's Witness and got expelled from their cult for talking about movies, so I can see why he can't see film criticism straight. It's kind of weird, though. Huh? You would think that someone who got expelled I from don't even Jehovah's Witness... Yeah. I, don't even, I don't understand the observation at all. I don't, yeah, what's the connection between being a Jehovah's Witness and not seeing film criticism straight? 
I, I, the impression I get from him, and it's what he'll tell you, is that he's perfectly capable of criticizing movies. Watch his um, prequels videos. He rips into them. <clears throat> the thing is, he no longer feels it's nice to do because there's people who work hard on it. Um, but then there's also the aspect of he doesn't. He probably doesn't want that to. He doesn't want that to happen to him now because now he's making stuff, and the easier way to make that less likely is by there not is, continuing through his criticism. There's a sense of professionalism to the point where we would even say that you know if you're a Martin Scorsese, you don't fucking go on an interview and say, you know, I th that new Transformers movies was shit. <laughs> it was yeah. just so shitty. God. <laughs> oh, nothing made any sense. Uh, you know, and I guess what I'm getting at is just something that we would say on a stream, not the kind of thing you'd hear from a highly revered director. And I believe that's what's uh, the actual primary motivation behind his change. He wants to start acting the part ready for when he becomes the part. Well, right. if, I guess, right? I, I mean, I'm sure... He needs. He's he's probably read some books on you know like you gotta you gotta believe it hundred percent. It has to be the truth. Live your truth, and then it will be the truth. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. And you know what? Um, a good filmmaker is not defined by box office. Fringy is not not defined by what what's another person says. Oh, I didn't say that they're defined by box office or what another one said. All I said is if. That's it. I didn't say you said that. I didn't say that you said that. I said that. You did just now. I didn't say that you said. He said you said that. Yeah. See. Isn't this confusing? What were you saying? That Chris has decided to live the life of the professional director, but that he hasn't, like, it doesn't make any sense, I guess, because he's still a YouTuber. Um, well, which, by the way, it doesn't mean, like, the... Uh, ...videos where he occasionally lets out... Well, as we saw, he breaks his rules all the time, and he breaks them by uh, accident well... as well, because he's still reviewing things. How can you create positive scales without automatically creating negative ones? Yeah, exactly. And especially when you talk about how, like, the sad state of Marvel movies is like, well, there are filmmakers in the industry making films, so you can't be doing that. And, you know, if you're reviewing three films and you talk about the amazingness of film A and B, and then C, you just go, was made by this guy. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, we it's, something. it's a f film, uh, it, it's, it's a film made by a, people. And what's funny yeah. is that He's um, going to do the line, because no. everyone should, if they want to come across at least somewhat reasonable. Like, yeah, I'm good with criticism, I think it's good to have criticism, blah blah they would be like, but Chris, are you sure? Should we not stop criticizing you now because you work hard? Like, you, you'd want us to stop, right? You wouldn't want us to criticize, you wouldn't want anyone to criticize you now that you work hard. And, and of course you'd be like, no, I, 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 Chris is important, it's to help grow. Then you'd be like, so why can't you criticize movies? That was a disrespectful. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Uh, well, well yeah, I just think yeah. that me as a YouTuber shouldn't be, you know, so judgmental about the people in the then, industry. But then the question would be, so you shouldn't be judgmental favorably then as well? Because, you know, you're not in the industry. Well, no, because positivity is an encouragement for art to flourish in a world where we need positing, you know, I positing the mannerisms down pretty messages. well there, Rags. I gotta say, <laughs> Gee, that, that means he seeped into my brain. I don't know. You don't sound dead situation. inside enough for me. <laughs> That's something that I S just sound like everyone you know. love died years ago, like three centuries ago. <laughs> uh, I think you would have gotten over it. Nope. Well, he has, maybe but, like, like, there's nothing else like he loves. Maybe, like, two years ago, where it's still kind of there. No, the point is that he never loved anything again, that all of, every single thing he loved is died that long ago, and he's just around still, like a husk. He took the inverse of the message that, like, sorrow is love persevering, and he's like, you know what, I'm just not going to love anything again to save myself the trouble down the road. Sorrow, sorrow is persevering through love. For him. <laughs> uh, Stuckman is about as useless as a film critic as you can get. A guy who admittedly won't give the truth. Um, well, you're talking about the Blade Runner stuff, probably. He's he's uh, he's strange. He could really use a, like a closer friend who can challenge him on a lot of this stuff. I feel like he um he climbed too high too quick and never changed his format ever. I say that even though the um, big change came recently, right? With the no more criticism. 
Well, sure, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's still like the same of, you know, we're going to have, you know, a five minute review where I spend a good amount of time just relaying who directed and wrote it. I'm not really talking about why that's mm -hmm. pertinent or how it means anything with regard to whether this is like prior projects or different. And then, oh, yeah, it was good. The cinematography was good. I liked it. Um, I like going to the theater. Anyway, uh, subscribe for more content. Boom, 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 boom. Hey guys, Submariner here. Just wanted to let you know your podcasts have been listened to hundreds of feet underwater. Ooh. Oh, interesting. The ocean has been efapped by us. It's more impressive to listen to our podcast a hundred feet below water than it is to listen to them tens of thousands of feet in the air. Yeah, it of is which actually. both of those have likely been done. I don't see why it would. Oh, I'm, you know. I'm sure it's if has been watched on a plane, but underwater, that's a uh, that's a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, crazy. Yeah. Isn't hopefully, it? hopefully not by the by the pilots. You know, we don't want to we don't want to get them laughing or you know really distracted or anything. Maybe rags. Maybe I bet we they're not even allowed to, to just to do their job even better. They're like, oh, today I was going to take a break, but listen, to Fab, I value. The craft, you know, and you got to stay focused. And I'm going to express my professionalism for flying planes in this plane flight that I do right now. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. Good. Either you have Jar Jar read you Good Night Moon every night before bed, or have the Inquisitor yell Reva's name at you as an alarm clock. That sounds. Uh... <laughs> I think the alarm. So clock what you're would saying be is. Do you want to have an annoying alarm clock, or would you like to have regular visits from the the incredible Jar Jar Binks, Hero of the Republic? Well, so, personally, I like my alarm clocks to be annoying because it gives yeah. me an incentive to uh, turn it off and it Riva. wakes me up. Riva. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Riva. If I heard that, that would wake me up. Um, you don't want your alarm clock tone to be like a lullaby. No, that is the opposite of what I would want. I, love, I think, yeah, I'd be Sorry. opting for... Yeah, the answer is pretty obvious. Uh, especially because as much as uh, Jar Jar is gorgeous and beautiful and wonderful, there's some going to be some nights where I'm like, I'd rather just go straight to sleep. But I guess I could just sleep while he's doing it. Uh, I mean, it. that's literally every night. <laughs> I would some nights I would want Jar Jar to visit me, I think. I mean. Uh, I man, some, but, like, not many, if I'm being honest. Jeez, wow. <laughs> Damn. Someone needs a bit of... some. <laughs> Someone needs some Chris Stuckman in their life. I the only reason is not because there's any particular problem with Jar Jar. It's just I don't want to be listening to stuff as I go to sleep. Typically, I just want to go to sleep. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh come okay. on! I hate when people pull things like quote I don't want to fling crap at creator of X after having already been a critic of things. It's such a jelly spine take. Well, this is the thing, People though. People are no... really not consistent <laughs> no. with that at all. Fine. <laughs> There's no in in interrogation of it. Uh, there's so many ways you could tear it apart as a statement, but none of them, you can't get to them, you know, in terms of, like, any fan question or any any insight that might just crawl into it. I think eventually there's got to be a film he covers where he's like, you know, I'm going to break my thing of being not, not critical. This one crossed the line. It's got to be for meta reasons, though. Yeah, it would be for meta. The, the director's a horrible person, or an actor did yeah, something that's horrible. What I'm thinking. I much prefer being jabbed and shit talked at a party. Having no one see you is the loneliest feeling in the world. It's better for the artist to be included, good with bad, than to be ignored entirely. I am you know, on board with this. There are some people who would agree with you, and there are many people who would disagree with you. If you. Yeah, that's true. If you created a movie alongside, let's say, ten of the people, and then Chris Duckman's about to review it, he gets to yours, and with the others, he, like, labeled all the aspects, and then with yours, he said, like, yep, uh, they made it, you know, in this amount of time, with this budget, and he's made this before. Yeah, so the next so film, like, oh, you'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah. man, shit, what? Uh, and you've not only, you yeah. know he thinks it's bad, but you've got nothing to work with, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Compared to the guy who said, you know what, I think your film sucks, but uh, I'm going to tell you why, so that you can maybe take it on board if you want to. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the best criticism can come from a stranger, because you know that they have no reason to tear you down, you know? To lie to you, either. Yeah, you know? well, yeah, yeah no reason to no lie to you is a better way to put it. investment in your emotions or anything, they're just, yep. Yeah. Trashing bad like movies is. is the only joy I have in life. Stucky2988. Oh my goodness.
Oh, Boogie, <laughs> thank you for that. Boogie, for that you know. He's a real one, that Boogie. And by that, I mean yeah. the fakest person imaginable. Yeah, he's a real fake one. <laughs> he's the realest fake one there's um, ever been. Criticism should be viewed as helpful. Most people just walk away and never tell the studio what they did wrong or why they didn't like something. I mean, even... I would probably, probably be inclined to... That's the the, the world, conventional man. wisdom would tell you, like, you want good faith criticism, not bad faith criticism. But even the bad faith stuff can tell you something. Maybe. Compared to nothing. Yeah, maybe it could. Nothing is nothing. You don't know what you've done well or what you've done poorly and how to yeah. improve, which should always be... It's always the thing, right? It's the... That, sure, what the work that you made may well be done, but the practice of trying to be a storyteller is something that you're doing perpetually. So if you can always be learning and growing, yeah, you want that. You would want that. And you're going to get that from people being honest with you. Kind of in the same way that you would be honest with yourself about the, the things that you've made, you know, while you're working on it. Well, if you're not honest with yourself, then, I mean, yeah, you are delusional, <laughs> which is not a, that's not a good thing to... uh to be. Hmm. Which is better, Man of Steel or the Marvels? Probably uh, uh, Man of Steel? I think it's Man of Steel because there's, we have the, uh, is it, what was her name? Was it Who's Fiora? We liked Man? her and Captain Man. That was something we liked. Um, there's obviously the penis pods. They were pretty cool. Uh, oh, Zod, Zod is himself. hilarious. He is a hilarious character, Zod. Zod's funny. Um, there's there's more yeah, things to be well, entertained tell that by. To Zod snap neck. The Marvels was like just a mess, complete. The, and any potential scene or line we enjoyed was just undercut completely by the creators not knowing what they had. And, yeah, I, it's and I say, really tough to draw something of value out of that one. Yeah, when I say not knowing what they had, it's like the equivalent of it's like they don't know what kind of meal they had when they had a grain of fucking sugar in their hand. They, they, <laughs> they, they like they somehow were just like whoops, dropped it. You're like uh, when well. they had a tossing of rice, they could uh, not make well. a, a delicious you know meal with it. I have a question for you: What's what's worse, the Marvels or Rebel Moon Part One? Rebel Moon Part One. Hmm. <laughs> Marvels is quicker. You Marvels bastard. is quicker, exactly. It is quicker. I Even think if I, we were to say they were the same length, I'd think I'd rather watch the Marvel. I, I would I'd rather watch, watch the Marvels, Marvels than Rebel Moon, yes. Rebel Moon is pretty painful. And that's gonna come back. It's gonna come back someday. Yes, with part two, the Scar Giver. Uh, <laughs> These are such great shit. inspired names. <laughs> um, you can assume that she gives scars. Do your best, Timmy, so... Timmy, I guess. Timmy, I love Timmy. <laughs> Timmy, I don't really know it. <laughs> this is not bad then. Uh, it sound like... <laughs> someone said about the coverage. Timmy. Quote: If you enjoy my videos, you may need mental health assistance, like for the better help. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting. <laughs> it, is, it is an interesting little. Uh... <laughs> oh no. Uh, of, 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 of particular note to my audience. <laughs> Better help. Hi, lads. Favorite <laughs> adaptation that isn't Lord of the Rings? Uh, hmm. Good question. Uh, well, so there's, it's funny. There are a lot of things I really like that are adaptations, but for which I have not seen the original, read the original. I haven't read the, the short story for Shawshank Redemption, for instance. Yeah, I'm Are we allowed to say things like Bly Manor? Or is that just so far removed that it doesn't even really count well, in the spirit I mean, of the Arcane question? Arcane is technically an adaptation, but it creates a whole bunch of new material. Yeah, it's so different that it's basically not the thing, perhaps. So, I think that's, uh, those are all just answers to different questions, I guess, right? Like, favorite adaptation in I general, then so, favorite yeah. one that sticks the closest to the source, and then one favorite one that you would just like it because of how much you like the source and you felt it was respected, I guess. Mm. Um, as to favorite adaptation of, like, it would just be The Prestige because that's taken from a book as well. Uh, ah, I see. Okay. But then, I mean, if we were going with those answers, then yeah, I probably would say something like Shawshank. Yeah. Just to you know, provide some other answers other than Prestige. <laughs> um, I like the It movie. Was less fond of part two. Mm -hmm. 
Like uh, obviously, Blade Runner is based on the short story. Um, so Androids. That. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? So that would be yeah. another one. I think Remains of the Day is based on a book. Uh, oh, okay. Um, oh, all right. Yeah, well, that's be another really one then. Uh, uh, what else would I be rattling off here? Uh, well, Jurassic Park is obviously based on the book. That's yep. true. Michael Crichton's novel. Mm hmm. Isn't Total Recall based on a book? Yes, Total Recall is based on another uh, yeah. Philip K. Dick uh, story. Not uh, to be confused with Dick Wolf. Uh, what, the creator of Law and Order? Yeah. Yeah. No, not, not to be, to be confused, confused with, with Dick Suckle. <laughs> Don't confuse them. Oh, Dick Suckle. Dick Suckle behind the genius that was uh, Wonder Woman 84. Oh my goodness, Dick Suckle. <laughs> Dick Suckle. Who, Mr. and Mrs. Suckle, you're fucking <laughs> cruel. I think it was more of a, we have to. We we can't miss this opportunity. There's so few the people in the world have this chance. We gotta take it. And then they were like, the kid can change the name if he has to, but... That's you know true, he, he can legally change his name. But he's gotta get through... He's yes. got to get a lot through a lot of schooling before. Um, poor guy. Well, sad, that's probably sad panda. Uh, that's good a enough number of yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Imagine the famous scene from R R ROT. R Revenge of the. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, they they did they did mean Revenge of the Sith, considering the rest of it. Uh, it's between Jimmy oh, okay. and Timmy, and it's liar. <laughs> you're with him, <laughs> Timmy. You're with him. You 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 with him. You you with him. You 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 are either with me. <laughs> that sounds like something they would have done. <laughs> Well, I mean, it was kind of what they did, right? With they live with the cripple fight. Yeah. Put on the hat, Timmy. Wait, Put it on. Wait, 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 wait. Be, because of Obi Wan. <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> Timmy is as uh as Anakin. Timmy. <laughs> Hello again, broodlings. Hope everyone is enjoying themselves. Hi Just there. wanted to bug you lot again to watch Better Off Dead. It's a fun, fun movie. I promise. Well, better off day. dead. Maybe one day. Give us yeah. Long Kong Fap. We need it. Also, high rags. Uh, Hello maybe to you. someday. Well, I mean, when there's less going on. There's so yeah. much when going on. When there's less going on. When there is actually so much going on yeah, that there might be three EFAP releases per week at this point, which is a mm. lot. Okay. That's a long. So, no bitching, no complaining. Exactly. How can we fit a Long Kong among that? Like, this is some. Yeah. Absurdity. We have to wait until there's less going on. Exactly. Hi, Rags. Hello. Do you guys still stand by Stuckman being the boogie of film reviewers, also high rogs? Well, you have to um, remember, there are phases of boogie. I... If, if he is, it would be the <laughs> phase of boogie back before everything went to shit. Yeah, because now, boogie now, compared to, it's not even comparable. Yeah. But yeah, when back when in the phase of boogie being popular and giving the most milk toast, like, lame... Gaming, gaming takes, perspectives yeah. that were just completely worthless. Yeah, this game is there. buggy. It, it that is not good. Do not support this. I am upset at that. You know, a lot of people have been talking about this, and I, I think open world it gives you a big chance to enjoy a big world, but a linear, you know, it can be a very mm. specifically designed experience. That's, yeah, so, you that know, sounds like him. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh. Anyway, <laughs> like and subscribe. That's just one man's opinion, you know, if you guys have an opinion, you know. <laughs> that's, all, yeah, that's one man's opinion. Yeah, I know, because you said it, and you're a human. Oh, it's so, yeah. This is my oh, rambling man. series, my vlogging series. This is my, uh, they're all the same! <laughs> <laughs> they're all rambling vlogs. Everything he does is rambling <laughs> vlogs. He doesn't do scripted videos. I recommended a, a film. a minor amount of work, yeah. Called Priscilla. A much better biopic than the stupid, no good, soulless, piss boring film that deserves zero awards, Elvis. Ooh. Wow. Uh, I've heard about that one, but remember, you're you're saying this into the main of three people who enjoyed that film, so I did like Elvis, yeah. yeah I liked Elvis. I think you and I liked it quite Elvis a lot, especially Rags. Yeah. So. I did like it quite a lot. That second half really kinda had me. Mm -hmm. And uh I don't know, it feels really weird that people have such a like passionate hatred for it. 
when you see it as well. And you're like, damn. I guess the editing really pissed yeah. people off a lot. And the um, was the but Tom Hanks's performance a lot of people. Tom picking Hanks, on? yeah, seems to oh, be a right. point of contention for a lot of people. Where he's like, fine for me, yeah. you know. I, I, I thought uh, I know, the I Butler, he good. was really, really good as yeah. Elvis. He was really yes, impressive. he was. He's very good. Didn't he get nominated for he some did. stuff for that? He got nominated for best actor at the. Uh, well, I think Academy it was a, a, a worthy nomination. I am inclined to agree. This man will eternally be placing eggshells before his feet. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> placing them himself. Yeah. Well, and so. perpetually backing up instead of walking forward. I think. Mm. Like oh, 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 oh. Are new Marvel movies artistic or autistic? Hi, Rags. Hello. Why not a bit of both? Yeah. Mm. There's a little. Yeah, there's a little bit of both in them. New better help is the same as the old, but now the therapists focus on the pronouns in your stories or late because they have other part-time jobs. If what they've done is make them actually licensed therapists, then that does like wipe out the biggest problem they fucked up with, I guess. But yeah, I still I we talked about it, like I ain't promoting mentally helping people through a fucking app I, that's sponsoring me. There's I no just way. Think like how how am I in any position to be making broad sweeping recommendations for a mental health service? I just don't. I yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's just something about that that just is strange to me. I can use a VPN or a razor or audible or something like that, and yeah, and I could be like, you know what? This is really cool. I recommend this to you because I use it, and it helps me shave. It helps me catch up well, on books. Well, the more relevant being that if there are adverse consequences of, I guess you don't like audio books. You know, that's that's an easy sort of like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Compared to what happens if you have problems with this mental health service that's been recommended, <laughs> then, you know. They kill themselves. Uh, um, is this guy's job to keep up and choose not to? This guy's job to. Ah, uh, I guess he's changing his mind. Well, he he likes he talks about it so much about how he loves to go to the movies every week, how he has to go to the cinema. So he he definitely wants to keep up. It's just that he won't share his negative opinions on films. He just keep them to himself instead. Pretty much, yeah, which just makes him incredibly boring, IMO. Especially because, like, you just you, you don't want to be stuck in a position where you just can't share what you feel. Which yeah, we, I mean, um, you... we're almost known for being people who, like, fucking shy away from that or, or, like, dispel it or say, like, just stop with the subject. But it's like, no, we do it all the time. Like, with abandon, mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> we and like being like, it fucking that... bored me, or it was exciting, or I was a bit scared, or I didn't really feel anything. It was like, you always throw I it just, in. We've been called the destroyers of art, the invalidator of people's opinions. It's, Could um, you believe it? it? It is lame, the notion that you should reject aspects in, instead of embracing the totality of the experience of consuming films, both good and bad, that you should just, like, kind of ignore or downplay the totality of that seems strange as well. You know, it, it, when you watch something really awful and then you watch a film that's great, so it's contrast between that peak and valley can just add a little bit more juice yeah. to the experience, you know? And then, of course, the other way around, it can be pretty miserable <laughs> watching a really bad film. But you gotta take the good with the bad, you know? Is it worth considering reaching out to him to talk like Star Wars theory? Dissecting Stuckman's video would be far more enjoyable if I knew he'd decided to talk. Well, uh, he's... Never ever going to speak to us in a million years. I would say it's yeah, not even whether or not you'd want to. It's the it would be like you you get shredded online. If if he was to join a call with us just to say he hates us, it would still be shredded online. Like why the fuck would you give him the time of day? That sort of thing. So um, I I, I happen to believe that Chris is probably very dependent on um public pressure and opinion, and there's almost zero benefit to talking to us. However, we would provide an obviously very kind and welcoming uh, scenario like we do with basically everybody if um, if you were interested happily ask him a bunch of questions about his outlook and his uh, future goals with filmmaking it would be fun but uh, yeah 100% um, there are interesting questions that I think you could ask him you bet yeah. I don't know the answers would be interesting but any chance to have the Soska sisters on EFAP or Open Bar I'm not sure maybe I don't know them very well but uh if I uh, have a few more interactions on Open Bar or, uh, sorry, on, on Real BBC, 
and uh, we'll try and find a fit for him. It tends to be how we go um, here. We've had one or two or three instances in the past of bringing someone on for something that they literally couldn't give less of a fuck about, and we were like, oh, whoops, and then so we wait until something comes up with the person's like, that. that's perfect for me. Like um, like ER with Boogie. We, that was a perfect right. fit. He loves him. It was a know? perfect fit. So. Yeah, <laughs> ER is a really big fan of Boogie, yeah. so we wanted to make sure that we got equal representation so as not to appear unfair. Mm-hmm. I completed my arc of watching Multiverse of Madness, one of the worst films ever made. Mauler's Unbridled Cataclysm made it all worth it, though. Yeah, sorry about that. You, you don't have to see the film before seeing that video, trust me. I cover almost everything. So, uh, don't, don't, don't worry about hurting yourself. But, I think it would be impossible to say that you wouldn't benefit at least somewhat from knowing the context fully before seeing the videos like that. But, uh, you know what? It's, it's on your own, uh, Punishment, I'll put it that way. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want to do that. I dreamed that I was invited to EFAP, and every time I wanted to say something, everyone got angry at me, to the point that the long man asked me to leave the show. <laughs> oh no. Dang, what a nightmare. Is this what Stuckman dreams about? No. He dreams about oh, being in press interviews, and someone saying, like, what does it feel like to be the greatest director of all time? And he'd be like, you know, I just, I couldn't be here without everyone else, and I'm just, I'm so... I couldn't believe this has happened, and you know what, it's, it's, it's uh, working hard, that's the key, working hard, or something like that. And then he wakes up and he's like, someday, I'm going to get there. And you know what, maybe he will, Shelby Oaks, you know? That was, uh, the hype is real, right? Uh, that's sure. right, the hype is definitely real. There you go. It's palpable, I can feel it coursing through my veins. As you probably see a doctor, I'm so excited. Me, my great-grandpa, and my grandma all went to see the Marvels, and we all laughed out loud at the dancing, singing. No one else was laughing. I lost it first, then my grandpa second. It was so stupid. Yeah. Uh, my cinema was pretty you. much empty. And in a way, I'm kind of envious. Uh, Doctor Who, now on Disney+. Plus. I'm gay. Okay. Well, well Doctor, Doctor Who will take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a shilling for the stuck manometer. Hmm. The stuck a meter. Bring you look up natural habitat shorts. You're welcome. Uh. Natural habitat shorts. I assume it's something to do with little critters that you're gonna love. Hmm. Natural habitat shorts. Hey, Mula. Ideas for plushies. How about the next line? Have a squeeze-to-talk, tickle-me-elmo-style quoting lines from past streams. I don't think they make those, but if they did, we'd probably do a line of them. That'd be fun. Yeah, we'd have to, we'd have to get our most famous quotes. Well, we'd probably just poll chat what would they want the most in terms of a line. Yours Ooh, would be high racks, right? I mean, it would have to be. I if mean, was that's one. definitely up there. That's definitely a potential. Um, so what Rags is saying is that he doesn't want to be a greasy critter. I don't want to be a greasy critter. Greasy isn't something you, you just don't want to be greasy ever. Uh, I don't know any yeah. context where you would well, want to be greasy. For, uh, except for Groundskeeper Willie when he was going to chase Homer through the ad ducks. He wanted to be greased up. Yeah, it's useful there because you can. Yeah, uh, so that he can. Or chase chasing, after him. was it Santa's little helper through the. Oh, wait. Yeah, sorry. I'm mixing them up. He needed to get greased up to chase Santa's little helper. It, he he was chasing Homer because he was stealing his retirement grease. Which, in that case, maybe the grease, greasing himself up would have helped. He could have grabbed Homer faster, uh, but he really uh, didn't yeah, take long to get him anyway. Were, that's right, because Homer is uh, not that fast. Homer is lumbering in, in some ways. He's, uh, and, he, and he tires yeah. quickly. Uh, his movements are... Hmm... They are, well, I was hmm. just thinking about when he fell on uh, Brown's uh, on uh, Superintendent Chalmers. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm sure that was that sounded just like the show, but none of that came through. Discord okay, was your it. enemy there; it cut you off completely. Right, right. Damn it! I was I was saying I was saying the line "Make way for Willie," and then when he landed on Superintendent <laughs> Jarvis, I, I really I put my all into that performance. So it's a shame that that was lost to uh That is a damn shame. Yeah, I don't think I want to try again. It was perfect. A friend once snuck shawarma platters into the theater, filled the whole hall with the smell of shawarma. Now that's some degenerate stuff. It's funny that, how this that's 
there are foods that <laughs> taste great and you love the smell of, but the, when you're not consuming it yourself, the smell of it is incredibly like distracting and uncomfortable. Yeah, um, th that's uncomfortable. The case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd Interesting. Say so. I'd agree with that. What would an example of that be? Like being um, made uncomfortable by the smell of food that you're not consuming. They like were, nachos. Yeah, or like a hot salsa dripping pizza yeah. thing with all kinds of like different toppings in the middle of the cinema. It's just like, yeah. And it could be something that I would love to eat maybe, but just the, the scenario is so at odds with my expectations that it distracts the hell out of me. Pretty much. I, I'm inclined to Fair agree. Thing. When people eat hot food in the cinema, it kind of does drive me a little insane. Um... I gotcha. The yeah, when I'm at the theater, and that just that just isn't the place I feel for meals. Well, well maybe it's the new um, before, maybe, um, maybe it's the new smoking, I'm, not smoking thing. <laughs> it's like eating, not well, eating. It's funny because the the ones for like meals again in uh in Australia, that's uh like if you go to uh like Gold Class or something like that, that's uh that's where you get food and they serve it to you in the theater. Like they come in. And they give it to you, and you can get champagne and shit, and the tickets cost like fifty dollars. Yeah, that's just that's so alien to me. That's crazy. Well, that the seems idea so is again, out of place. It's, you know, it's meant to be like fancy, um, and it is kind of fancy, uh, but it's not the kind of thing that you know I would ever do with any degree of regularity. Does seem off. Doesn't seem quite right. Mine's going to be inscription soon. Going to get that two-player physical edition. You talking about the game? I'm not sure what the context for that is, though, exactly. But good, I, I think. Inscription? Yes. The, is that, are they talking about the game inscription? Yes. Hmm. I've gotten food in the theater. It's not terrible, but the have a full-service restaurant in that particular theater, is that acceptable? I mean, if that's what they're offering, then yes. I just, you know, that's not the one I'm going I to, mean, I guess. Yeah, I. it's just, it ain't right, like, watching movies <laughs> in that kind of an atmosphere when you're, like, sitting there, especially, part of it also comes from the fact that a lot of other people are going to come in after you and sit down there, and you're, I think, I feel like you're inviting making that setting physically just full of grease stains and food this and all that stuff. It's bad enough as it is with, like, popcorn and sodas, but... Mm. I, I, I feel like it just takes it to another level. Uh, wouldn't the studios get more money from the day and date on their streaming service versus giving half the ticket price to the cinema? I don't think it works out that way. I think that there's more money to farm in, like, so to speak, uh, in Wait. theater releases than in streaming releases. Streaming it's not like it's one-to-one. -one. on, like, a streaming service are not going to get you... People aren't paying individually, they're paying on a per-month basis. Yeah, the most you'll see is a bump um, in subscriptions or the ads that may have been washed, to, you know, like Netflix is running ads now in more packages. There's no world where Oppenheimer makes a billion dollars going to no. streaming directly. That doesn't happen. Downsizing was a 135-minute film to get to one joke. I watched it. I, uh, I watched it, it too. To we watched it together. Yeah, that was, uh, that movie sucked. Mm-hmm. Didn't have to. There was some stuff, remember, we noticed, we were like, oh, uh, there's some things that are huge in their rooms that are small things to us. That's... Yeah, like, uh, like the rose that was, the, that was yeah. really, really fucking big that he could buy. Yeah, stuff like that. But there, were, there was a couple, it was basically a couple sight gags that played with the idea that they were small. But at the same time, one of the biggest failings of that movie is that they don't actually do anything with that idea for the most part. It's just a bit of window dressing for the most, you know, mm -hmm. for most scenarios. Uh, hey, Fab Crew and guests, been thinking of starting a movie review channel of some kind. You've probably been asked this before, but what advice would you give? Well, we the, can hit the main ones. Uh, cover the kind of stuff that you enjoy, have a good microphone, make the kind of content that you would want to watch. Amendments I would make are cover things you're passionate about rather than necessarily enjoy. You know, if it's something you really fucking hate, get it out there. Why? What do you don't like about it? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. And then on the good microphone front, it's like true. And then also just try and don't, don't, even someone with the best voice in the world can speak in a way that's annoying as fuck. Like try and, <laughs> I don't even know what voice recommendation I would have. Just uh, enunciate and don't 
shout randomly. Oh, remember how much random high pitched or high volume noises piss us off? Yes. Don't put random high. Don't put random loud noises. It's not funny. It's not clever. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's funny to think about as a thing that people do, but no, in the situation, it just hurts your ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's no amount of funny that will overpower the pain that I feel in my ears. There's no joke funny enough. The pain comes first. Uh, do more Saturday faps on new movies, also high rags. Hello. Well, this well, boy, stream... you came to the right place. Yeah, this was right before we put out the Aquaman 2 and uh, Godzilla Minus 1 faps, so... Enjoy. If they meant specific ones, but I mean, we... movies is the main thing we cover, so you'll be alright. You'll be alright. Oh yeah, because they got the Puss in Boots one, too. That's Which right. I saw a lot of people ah, say they were right. very happy with because of the fact that most of it was just spent on praising Puss in Boots. I was like, pretty much. It's just all the missed opportunities for analysis, which is uh, mm. not the point of either of their channels, but oh well. Uh, one of the big fears people have about Disney getting all the Fox's IPs was that Disney would only make X movies a year. Now that's split between existing IPs and now Fox's IPs. Opportunity cost. Yeah, but now people would just wouldn't want them to make them anyway. Like, Pretty much, like, why would there be any reason to get excited about an alien film under Disney? Yeah, imagine someone said, like, oh, I'm so sad that they focused on this, that, and the other, so now we don't get an alien film. And it's like, why would you want an alien film from Disney? It's I don't a even... blessing. It's a blessing that we're not getting anymore. Yeah. You don't even want an alien film from the people who fucking made it anymore, so... Mm. Oh, yeah. Geez. No, I mean, I don't want an alien film from James Cameron or... Uh, or Ridley Scott. Or uh, Ridley Scott, so, yeah. Two tries, dude. Two tries. Um, yeah. The fucking goat did two... He's done more bad alien films than great ones. Then he did good. Uh, just went to a nightclub. Not doing that again. Oh. Well, you know. You know, it's not, not for everyone. Yeah. I don't think I would enjoy a nightclub myself unless... Well, I no, maybe. I don't know. I think it depends on who I went with. I would never go alone. It's just not my thing to go alone. But if I was there with people, meeting other people, then um, yeah. and you were just kind of letting loose and drinking a bit and trying some stuff and not I going would, overboard, of course. But no, it's, uh, I think I could be into it. I would immediately like want to talk to people and meet people. And then I'd just be like, can we just go somewhere quiet so I don't have to shout? Yeah, and then go somewhere <laughs> where the music isn't blaring. And then yeah, then like we go to a pub or something. Caller. Yeah. Oh, pub. I'd much rather go to a pub. Yeah. yeah. Get some proper food. Talk to some blokes. Exactly. Some chaps. Big old table. You know, mates. where there's a hum of talking in the background, but not enough that you can't hear everybody at the mm -hmm. table. That environment is fun. Uh, so, did the music industry die when they stopped physical media like CDs and tapes, Chris? <laughs> oh, he, he didn't. I don't think he was saying the movie industry dies. More so that he doesn't want theaters or physical media in and of themselves to die. The. The problem with it is, the, the the other other symptom. It's like a symptom of other problems, I guess, or the other problems need to be solved. The fact is, what do you do when something you love a lot, as you know, a, a medium or a hobby, is just not as popular enough to sustain in an industry-wide way? I mean, what what can you do other than artificially prop it up? It's like other than that, you need to you need to make people interested in it again. But, I mean, streaming, yeah. if stre if it would provably, like the wizard says, streaming has replaced anyone's interest in physically going to shops and physically looking at physical media, then that's that, I suppose. Um, you know, we would argue with gaming or with other stuff, there's lots of these, like, pragmatic benefits, and at that point, I guess, you need to inform people, and if they already know it, and they still don't care, then it's not fair to force an industry to, like, provide that service just for the people who are interested, like me and you, or whatever. I don't know, it's um, it's unfortunate, but also could just be where film was always heading, or at least that portion of it, and that it's been delayed up until now for whatever reason. I think that the fucking, the COVID and streaming thing has, like, exacerbated the whole situation. Yeah, I think it accelerated it. And um, it happens so fast now that it's like, wait, but I want it back, and it's like, I don't know that we can get it back. Um, I mean, it's a weird comparison, but if someone said, you know, I... I way prefer DVD to Blu-ray or something. It's like, yeah, but there's okay, but that's not. It's not going to happen now. Well, yeah, DVDs and all. The interesting one with that one is that it's just DVD is an inferior format to Blu-ray. 
Well, I was saying I that... think the advantage might come from like from that example. Can't you just artificially make something like indistinguishable from a DVD by lowering its resolution and like if you got a Blu-ray co if you wanted to because you can do this In to theory, make things yeah. look like VHSs, right? Oh, like so if, if you, you got Oppenheimer your... yeah. and you wanted to watch that as if it was a VHS, you could crop it and you could lower the resolution, add a little bit of you know, aberration to it, and you might be able to essentially make something that was indistinguishable from a VHS. I think what I'm interested in now in terms of the conversation about media preservation is now we're starting to see games go for uh, all digital releases. Mm -hmm. Alan Wake 2 was digital only. Uh, Hellblade 2 was digital only, but they're actually charging less for it, so there's that. And then there was that thing recently, well, recently, hey, it depends on when this comes out, uh, the Ubisoft saying like, oh, you know, you should get used to the idea of not owning games. Um, yeah, it feels like over the next few years, I wonder if the next generation of consoles are going to be digital only. I wonder when that's going to eventually just be pushed, you know, as, uh, as, as being the case. That's the thing, there has to be financial incentives for them to continue doing it, and apparently it's just becoming less and less feasible for them to continue. Uh well, I mean, you you'll charge at... a premium and specifically make a certain amount of physical copies of something if uh, you want. I don't know if that. I don't know if that's like a good strategy. I think. Um, I don't know. Like, because because the 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 reality is, you know, that from the perspective of a company like Sony or Microsoft, or particularly from the perspective of a publisher like EA, who doesn't get any of the um, like the license fee to put their games on these platforms, sixty dollars. For, like, FIFA, that's direct to them, compared to $60 on a disc that needed to be manufactured yeah. and distributed and then sold through a middleman, and then there's licensing fees. You just make a shit ton more money from a, uh, from a digital release. That's why they want to push for digital, because they make more money without having to raise the price of video games dramatically, um, which, of course, they want to do. Um, which, you know, people will be like, oh, but inflation is like, oh, but microtransactions and uh, DLC, so... And a lot no, more people actually. buying them. And also, just fundamentally, if people don't want to pay $100 for a video game, that's nope. it. That's the end of the conversation. You don't get to say inflation. Yeah, people if you're getting me... If, pay. if you want me to pay $100, then you'd better give me, like, a collector's edition full of cool shit. All right. Then we can talk. Uh, rags what was the, hold up when was the last time you guys bought a game at like set have you bought a game at 70 dollars yet uh probably yeah probably. probably like dead space or something i don't know if that was higher price like, okay i was like non-collector's edition just straight up just the game yeah i mean i think i think so i think basically all games now because of new gen uh 70 bucks okay like i think spider-man was was uh cost more yeah Rags on Lost Stream, quote, If you buy all those ducks, are you going to have a big bill? No, Rags. You'll have a lot of bills. Get it right. I don't know. Why, why, why would you purchase them separately instead of under a single transaction? This doesn't make... The Super Chat doesn't make any sense at all. That would be madness, to buy all those ducks separately. Well, you I guess to, first you might have bought them all separately more. because you bought them each at the time. You didn't buy them all together. Maybe, that's bought... true. Yeah, that's... That collection Gradually. represents potentially months or years worth of, you know, exactly. collecting investment. Okay, that's that's true. He is of losing physical media. I guess he needs more for his shelf in the background. Mola smug. I mean, there, that's his presentation. I mean, a lot of people, especially of his generation, have those collections, you know, and they uh, have to stop eventually, I suppose. Especially if you started. I feel them... like you'd have to. You could keep the aesthetic. There are ways you could print out stuff and then put it into, you know, CD cases. But it's it's not going to be the same. But I mean, at least aesthetically, if you wanted to stick to it, if you ever bought a game digitally, you could make one of those for you know the game. Though obviously that's a workaround that shouldn't have to be done. But um, but yeah, I don't know. It's uh. DVD collections, video collections, they all have to stop eventually, I suppose, or at least they will stop making those to be added to collections. Uh, 
Can't wait for the lost media guys like Blame It On George to talk about Willow and the Wile E. Coyote movie in about a year from now. Well, Wile E. Coyote will be coming to us, right? And Willow is still... Yes. I guess you could call it lost media, but like you can still get it Willow is... I would, I'd call it lost media. It's just, it's just bizarre to say it because it became lost media so incredibly quickly. I think less than six months after the first episode came out, it was unavailable to watch legally. Kind of nuts. It's funny because it's uh, like, so Coyote awful. <laughs> <laughs> the Wiley Coyote movie is coming out though now, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Coyote versus me, I believe. So uh, I, I will probably be watching that. What's his middle initial for? Uh, I can't remember what his middle initial is. Um, uh, what, what does his middle initial stand for? Oh, I don't think we ever got it. I think it is just Wiley Coyote. We never get the... Uh, Reason for the initial. I recall watching a Wheel of Fortune episode where Wile E. Coyote was the answer, and the person said Wile E. Coyote, which is not the same, and they did not get the points, and someone else said Wile uh, E. Coyote. That's right, you gotta emphasize name. the E. It is Wile E. Coyote. Not Wile E. Coyote. His, his, his first name oh, uh... is Wile. Not Funnily Wiley. enough, it seems like, because uh, I hear people say Coyote, and I also hear Coyote. Heard both. Coyote. Yep. Some coyotes. Yeah, like that's right. Them, for it. them coyotes. I thought it was them just coyotes. like a way that people actually, because I've seen it in like documentaries where they call it the coyote, and I'm like, oh, I guess some people just call it a coyote. Yep. It's just sort of a thing that sometimes people do. It's like, um, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head. Um, uh... What are your thoughts on Shad's AI art takes? <laughs> the AI art conversation, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know. Extensive answers. Uh, for me, I'm not exactly sure entirely of what his full takes even are, other than hyper defense of using AI, which, um, the funny part for me is just that there's a lot of use of AI in artwork that people are completely unaware of. Um, an example maybe that people are less familiar Relation. with is when creating uh, the Urukai in Lord of the Rings and a lot of the armies that they were given scripts that involve a bunch of like different moves, but that ultimately they, there was an AI to decide what moves they would be. So uh, Peter Jackson talks about it that when they were first doing it, they would basically set it up and hit you know play and record and then look at it once it was done and see what it looks like. And one of the first sets with the AI they were given, some of the Urukai would just run away. Because they didn't want to, I guess, be in the fight. <laughs> like, I'm not exactly sure what Art. the AI was doing um, that concluded that to be the best job. But he said they had to then, like, you know, rewind, refocus, and knock that out as a potential. It's like, no, you can't run away. You've got to fight. But, uh, you know, whatever you decide to do. And, yeah, so there's, you know, Lord of the Rings itself has a lot of AI in it. Um, but then on the other side of things, like, I, I wouldn't want... Uh, automation to the level of I, you know, I just type in words like sci-fi, but with big fantasy Press. dragons with portals that come from Lord of the Rings world. Uh, see what happens. And even if it made something amazing, it's just kind of like, oh, that was me. <laughs> I did that. It's like, I don't know. Mm. So, uh, you know, this isn't some like new take. It's just that there's some line between both of these processes and I draw it somewhere and I'm not sure where it is. It's uh, it's not something I thought that much about, I guess. Uh, but it is uh concerning the potential of the number of jobs that might be lost and like artistic. Well, there's that, but there's also deception sectors. that's concerning as well, mm. with deep fakes or what have you. And it kind of has created these discussions about the nature of like people who have a style, and then that's you know that is in some way unique to them. And then that style gets carved in on by like an algorithm, and the the trouble that that can cause them. Yeah. Uh, so if people will be more receptive to a good product than the amount of effort put into it, then what is your opinion on the sentiment? At least you tried your best. Well, that's for the person, not the product. Um, yeah. 
But I something could be really crap as a product, but you can admire someone's you know blood, sweat, and tears that went into trying it out. Yeah, that's but for them the to let them the know that it's acknowledged and... that they they really did try, and that that's it's good that they tried, and that next time you can try so with that same amount of effort, but hopefully next time you'll create something even better because you'll have learned a lot. That's right. Yeah, because skill and effort are like very different fields. This uh, one could be huge, one could be tiny. Let's say you know different levels. Uh, something else is going on. CIA embedded in Disney. Okay. Right, wish, upon wish Upon a Bonaparte? Wish Upon a Bonaparte? Can we get a Wish Upon sequel with Napoleon as the main character? Interesting. Hmm. Don't dismiss it out of if, hand, you know, give it a chance. I mean, yeah, what if Napoleon Bonaparte came across the magic wish box? With the magic yeah. Chinese wish box. Yeah. So there's a lot about. of potential with that one, yeah. A lot of stories you could tell. Does he mean the AI movie Twins? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he confused his better help entry for his video script? Well, that would be a blunder. Uh-oh. Mm. Classical composer here. I feel film music has a hit a rut where cookie-cutter hollow Hans Zimmer imitations are standard. Do you see any end to this? I think it's kind of like all things with art, that it goes in waves. And that we get. Yeah, it's in cycles and waves. Yeah, and, and a lot and of it's a lot of it's bottom up, a lot of it's top down. I think almost everyone now is waiting other. for film to um, fix itself up because it's been embarrassing for too long. Even with the yeah, acknowledgement that there's plenty of good films that still come out, that, you know. But we want we want it to be back to when we wouldn't expect cringe all the time. You know, that'd be nice. Evil Mustache Man was a failed artist. Beware of the scorned Stockman and his army of Hugo Boss bedecked cinema snobs. Oh no. Interesting. Uh, EFAP kicking Jay is one of the only joys in my life. And that was alongside EFAP is one of the only few joys in my life. Ugh. One day, Jay will maybe return. Mm. Being afraid of being challenged is the only thing that brings me joy in life. Oh, boogie. So many joys. Oh. The Empire is never more alive than when we sleep. Tell Disbrew and Gary to stop sleeping on Andor. It's great and needs more support. Promote Gilroy. I think we do. Uh, there's only so much you can say, though. And I don't want to be like, you know, I don't want to be pushing people on it all the time. There's, it's fine for people to not check something out if they just don't want to. Gotta leave that door open, too. Like, I don't want to be the equivalent of, like, you know, like, uh, uh, Andor, but for vegans or something. You're just like, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> watch it. Especially because I think if you do that to someone and then they watch it, they're not gonna like it. Yeah, people, you can lead a horse to water and such, but sometimes, look, there are, there are just films and entire genres that just aren't my thing, and it's okay. That, you know, that's, that's all right. And there are plenty of people who really don't like the things that I like, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah, there are have people who watched stuff, Andor and, and didn't like it. On their stuff. Yeah, and they're wrong, but <laughs> and that's they, fine. They need to be hunted down, goes, yeah, but it's fine. You know? Almost missed this one. Hey, Massives. If you guys had a make-a-what-if story on a real-life event, historical or otherwise, what would it be? Hmm. A real-life... Uh, so, a story based off of a real-life event? But, like, Is that the... make a small change and how does everything... What, what's the result of everything? Um... Make a small change... I'm curious... Well, I guess it doesn't have to be a small change, happened... but a what-if. I mean, a small change could lead to potentially big, you know, things. Um, I mean, the, think about how many bullets, if they were just a few inches in a different direction, we would have lost great, you know, and amazing yeah. and, and important people in history. But, I mean, not counting those sorts of things, of which there's probably a million. Um, I mean, what? I mean, what if World War One had lasted a few more years? You know, what? What, what would that have meant? for, you know, America's involvement and, you know, all these other empires and hmm. things like that. And, you know, what would that have meant for the German people? And, you know, would there have been a Second World War if the Great War had lasted, you know, a few years longer? Because when it ended, I mean, it, it kind of, in a way, it ended suddenly. Um, all the stuff that was you know, being made that wasn't able... For instance, the, the prototypes for the Thompson submachine gun were being shipped over to Europe when the, you know, when peace broke out, essentially. Um, 
but all the all the technological advancements, um, all of the political line, and you know all the political and you know resource changes that would have led to you know a potentially different twentieth century could be potentially very interesting. I mean, I'm I'm of the opinion that hey, if you put me in battle, you put me in charge of the Battlefield franchise, we might be making an alt history World War One that takes place in the mid twenties. You know, it, it, there's a lot of stuff that you could do with that. So, there's what a million answers. No so natural disasters hit the dinosaurs. What is what is the history of Earth look like then? Well, no people. That's for sure. I mean, you'd be interested to to know what might happen. Yeah, you don't. You have no idea what what would happen ultimately. Uh, just, well, there are people. Un unlikely people that it would believe. give rise to mammals. Well, uh, maybe rise maybe. to mammals, yeah. except because mammals were around, but mammals is a dominant um, grouping on the planet. Yeah, but they don't have to be dominant in order to have certain life forms develop, right? Like we could get monkeys still, and then apes. Oh, maybe. sure, but I mean, I guess it's a question of how likely is it that we could have come to be and have thrived if there were still a whole bunch of dinosaurs roaming around compared to. Uh, the animals that we had to contend with. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? What a what-if scenario. I wonder what kind of life we would have. Or maybe most things just stayed the same because dinosaurs had it all figured out. Well, it's just dinosaurs remain consistent for like 200 million years, so... They're having know, fun for the a while. following 60 million years there. 65 million. Also, play Little Nightmares, High Rags, Frog, and Mubes. Hello. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hello. Bo is Afraid is 90% great. The ending is actually the most infuriating thing ever. Also watch Paranoia Agent. Also, also High Rags. Hello. Fair enough. That's the, that's the big expensive A24 film, right? With Joaquin Phoenix. That I hear I from a lot really, of people is a really... bizarre abstract movie. Yeah, I, I have no interest at all in seeing it. Uh, just doesn't... Uh, Bizarre and Abstract by A24? I don't know, it's got me wary. I mean, I would be more interested in seeing it if more people that I know had said it's good, but I haven't really heard that, so... Yeah. Yeah, no. It's kind of how I do recommendations, because I'm normal. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, that was the last oh, one. Oh my oh, goodness. Boy. All uh, right. Thank you all for Exciting. sending in your wonderful messages, and I suppose... Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. For now, we shall say... Goodbye. Farewell. Yeah, see ya. Adieu. See you later.